hello classmates and teacher that will probably watch this. Uh, welcome to my presentation on Inka Essinghai and her dreamlike imagery that she likes to use by me. So Ikan Hesenai was born in 1969 in Pennsylvania. Uh, she is a known painter and as well as a printmaker, known for a lot of her like lifelike surrealism as well as her flat pop art. But excuse me, she's more known for the lifelike surrealism than the pop art. A lot of her paintings are described as odd dreamlike, playful, disturbing. I've seen one case of someone describing them as fetish-y, but not in a sexual manner, I guess. The person in the interview didn't really go on too much to in detail with that, but that's just kind of another way that her artwork has been described. She has had shows all around the world, from Italy to Tokyo, and but she's mostly shown in the U.S. A lot of her works are based on stuff like myths, fairy tales, or what she describes as an inner vision. I'm kind of guessing that she kind of means like a gut feeling, like how you feel that something is feeling this way or that way. So, when you look at a lot of her artwork, she is an oil-based painter, and she works mainly on either canvas or oil paper. A lot of her work is super nice, super clean, but also super detailed. Like, if you can see my mouse, right here is a really good detail spot, and same with these bubbles up here, but the rest of it is more flat, more one dimension. Here's another one that's really interesting and still kind of, move my mouse, still that offshoot of like having flat imagery but also really good details and while it's not as lifelike as the other piece or some, or as some of the other pieces that I'll later show, it's still like really good. In this one you can see more of the paint strokes like in the grass down here you can definitely see where her, um, brush was to get that grass texture. Uh, this one's one of my personal favorites. It's another, it's, it's another surreal kind of like, you get a weird feeling from it. She has said that some of her works kind of have a little bit of a story, but most of them are just kind of putting it on a page. It's more of a feeling rather than a story, which is something I personally strive for. Uh, and this one, you can't really see as much of the brush strokes as you could some of the other pieces. Uh, this one is another interesting one. It's called Girls' Night Out. And what I find interesting is that you can clearly see one figure here. You can see a face here, but there's these two kind of merge together. It's another case of her um, painting being super smooth but you can kind of see here and here by the leg how, how she can get that good like kind of uh, satin silk I guess texture um, so yeah I, you have these otherworldly creatures and you also have something going on in the back and some I'm guessing of what could be like a club because a girl's night out is typically a club uh, here's just another version of some of her work displayed um, because for some reason the gallery I was looking at couldn't have this picture that's on the right, didn't have a close-up of it. So you can kind of see also more of the scale-ish. Like, they're decently large pieces of works, but they're not, like, take up a full wall large. And from what I've seen of just perusing some of her past galleries, a lot of them are this spaced out with a lot of blank space in between each painting. Which really gives it, it it's like a, excuse me, it's kind of, it makes you immerse into each one without being distracted by a different piece. Here's a, her second series of work, and this one's going to be very different from the past 
paintings that I just showed. Because this one has more of that fairy tale surrealism that you can almost pick out where, like, what she took inspiration from. Like, this one I find super interesting because you can clearly see a girl, a woman, a female figure here walking through, kind of spreading her vines over. But then there's this figure in the back that's kind of stealing all of this flowers all of, kind of away. And I don't know if this was the goal, but it almost reminds me of a weird uh, little Red Riding Hood. Here's another one that I find super interesting because there is so much yet so little going on. Because there's a lot. You can see that there is a lot, but it's so... Like, it's very heavy in certain spots, but not as heavy in other spots. Like, over here, there's not much. Down here, there's not much. But right here, there's a lot going on right here. And my, it draws my eye over here with this figure on top of this thing. Like, all of them are so surreal. And I can see what they mean by dreamlike and just odd. And again, with that feeling. This one was probably one of my favorite pieces that she's done. Because it's bleak, it's lifelike, but it's also, like, it's intriguing. It reminds me of Santa, of like a St. Nicholas kind of figure that is very popular. And that's kind of another myth that I'm sure that she took on. This is another one that also intrigued me. I have no idea what this could have been based on. But it almost looks like it's a flesh wall with flesh strings. And these, the first five paintings are super dreamlike, but these last five paintings are almost nightmarish. Like, they're creepy. They're weird. They're not, you know. Uh, this one also kind of takes on a dreamlike set. This is a series of three different panels. Give me one sec. I feel I have to take up again. <laughs> Excuse me again. Sorry. And unfortunately, I couldn't get a clear picture of this. But it, I, this should be the picture that people have said to kind of remind some of like nymphs of Apollo trying to seduce some nymphs. Because I read an article about that, but they didn't show a picture. They didn't give really give me a title of the piece, but that's kind of what I think of, because you can kind of see this nymph-like figure, and all of these, like, trees, and that's another thing that people like to point out about her work, is that if you look at a lot of these, there's trees and branches, and that's a big part of her work, is that nature, tree, and branch. A lot of her inspiration is taken in by her surroundings, what's going on in the moment. But she also mixes that with a lot of myths, tales, otherworldly creatures. Um, and not a lot of her paintings have to have a story. Like, a, some of them do, a lot of them do, but they're also based off of stuff. Some of them are just kind of what she feels. It's kind of like painting, it's like a gut feeling painting as she goes. And she just honestly paints what she wants. She, I've noticed that she's kind of more a free-spirited painter, I guess. Um, but, yeah, here's my work excited while I talk about, uh, more about her work. But even when you look at some of her other works that I did not include in the presentation, they all kind of have this odd feeling that I get when I look up works of, like, I'm just going to use Cthulhu for an example, because that is a popular, like, otherworldly character in media. Is that when you look at it, you kind of get that same feeling of, like, wow, that's really cool. Kind of freaky, but it's really cool. I would love to see more of this, but... Uh, this is kind of what we have. So, um, 
thank you for watching this. And sorry for my awkwardness. I'm not good at presenting. <laughs>